Merrily Kiss the Quaker. Now, do this tune part by part, and then we'll play the whole thing afterwards. Here's the first part. Now, here's a bare bones version for you. <sighs> the Quaker's wife, she baked a scone, and Johnny danced while it was on. <laughs> Let's make that more interesting. Grace note on the B there. Is that just playing along A? We'll play. Basically, we're playing. Two repeated days at the end. A B A A. So we can separate these two A's either by lifting our fingers, as I just did, or preferably with the grace note. Or you can try just using bellows pressure, which will obviate you needing to change your hand position. Ya di da ya da da. Now, please resist the temptation to play lots of F sharps in this first part, or any at all. Don't start like that, but play with the D. And avoid the temptation to go. Do that at the end. It's really cheesy. That's the tune. Now that last G, if you want to keep the slidey feeling going on a bit, three Gs. Now, if you want to do something with the C, it's hard to grace it. You can use the C sharp here, which of course sounds horribly cheesy if you let the C sharp sound, so you have to be very snappy about it. Very BC player style of ornament. Don't like it much myself, but you can use it if you need to. A better grace note to use would be the E, because it's in key, but it's more difficult. You would have to use your first finger here and then third and second. I don't think many of you are going to be doing that somehow, so what else can we do? We can, instead of playing this phrase, B, C, B, A, we can play B, B, C, A, which makes a nice change. Now, play the same thing, but merge those two Bs with a bellows press. So it sounds like this. Let's look at part two. This is very simple. Uh, it's all the question of these repeated G's here. So we've got B, G, G, A, G, G, B, G, G, A, G. Now you can play these as you probably naturally tend to play them with one finger, jabbing the G with one finger. Or even this finger. Whatever you like. The other thing you can do is use two fingers. So if you start the B with your ring finger, this 
This gives you a few advantages. You try it. It allows you to be smoother. It also allows you to coordinate your bellows easily with your fingers. Give a little bellows whack as you as you use your first finger here, which will help the tune along. And also, it does allow you to play much faster if should need ever arise. You don't think you'll need to play this particular tune at that kind of speed, but it's very difficult to do that with just using one finger on the repeated notes. If you use two, it does allow you extra speed should you ever need it. So that's the, f the second part. Spice it up a bit by throwing in the C from the first part. Part three of this tune is fairly clearly an add-on at some point. I think the original ditty or song got augmented because uh, the first two parts are basically pentatonic, although you have that little C. In the, in, the, uh, in the first part you have that C natural, but there's no F sharps anywhere. Uh, but in the second part, the third part rather, we are going to get to F sharps. So we finish on a G here, climb up, I think you really want to be on the second finger for that G there. And you can nicely, you can put a grace in here. Now, I like to start that B with my D with my second finger, so I cheat and use a triplet. Get up there to the index finger on the D. Again, we can play along A as in the as in the first part and second part, or we can do, use the grace note. Or just bellows pressure. And this rundown here. You can play all the notes. A, A, B, A, G. Or you could mix it up. You will mix it up there to make it more interesting for yourself. So play long notes, play all the triplets. whatever you like to make it more interesting. And that's basically the third part. Let's see if I can't play the tune a couple of times so that slowly, slowly, so you can play along.
Ehrlichest, the Quaker.